things are going to change a little bit, but the show must go on. So you rolling? Yeah, we could call the episode that. The show must go on! That was a really bad version of that, sorry. I can't really do Freddie Mercury, I'm sorry. He hits, you can't, uh, he's passed away. Yeah, I suppose there's that too. That gets my goat? What does that mean anyway? What a stupid phrase. Hi everybody. It's Big Anklevich here. This is Rich Outfield. And this is a... That gets my goat on the go. How long has it been? A long time, I would say. Years. I think the last time we did one of these was when we were on the way back from the last new media expo that we went to. Oh, great. The guy behind me was trying to cut, to, to uh, go around us just as I pulled over to let him go past us. Well, we we did our uh, Pixar marathon since then. Oh, you're right. But we it, did some of you, those on the go. Huh. Yeah, it's been long enough you wouldn't remember. Oh, my. Did you see that? And he pulled into our lane and slowed down to punish us. <laughs> Since we're in a car that's about three feet long, let's run him off the road. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to be nice to him. Apparently he didn't like that. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I'd forgotten about those ones. Those were partially on the go as we were coming back from the geek cabin. We didn't do any on the go to the cabin, did we? No. No. We did several at the cabin. Most of them at the cabin, I think. We did have to do some of them even after we got back, huh? We didn't finish all the rules. <laughs> yeah, a few of them too many. were a couple months later and enough time had passed that we told the same stories. <laughs> Forgotten what we'd said. Yeah. It's the way of the Dune Steve by now. Yes, yeah. you get to hundreds upon hundreds of episodes. This is uh, our ninth year, right? We started 2008, so... In a couple of months, we will have been going for nine full years on this show. We have like 182 episodes, I think, of the Dune both Steve. the Doonstief and That Gets My Goat. Yeah, but if you look at podcasts like Podcastle that have started after us, or, you know, ones that started even after that, and, you know, they've got four or five hundred episodes makes us look like slackers, I guess. Sure, but if you add those two up, that's almost 400 episodes. And that also oh, wait, doesn't wait. count the marathon episodes, because those weren't numbered. They were put in That Gets My Goat, but weren't numbered into the That Gets My Goat numbering system. I mean, we did 28 on Duplo Remo. We did uh, 13, like three or four times, two or three times, I don't know, with the uh, 13 Nights of Halloween. We did two worst marathons ever. And on top of that, we also have episodes of the Rish Outcast and the Ankle Cast. So I think if you add those up, we got a lot. How many Ankle Casts are there? Do you know? There's uh, only around 30 something. I've already been well eclipsed by the Rish Outcast, which uh, started well after me. <laughs> but, you know happens when you go like a year and a half between episodes yeah we're on our way basically we just wanted to do a road trip i think rish has been looking for something for us to go and do together as part of a road trip for a long time just uh, go and see a concert somewhere far off or or something like that and finally uh when we were unable to work something out Rich said, hey, I'll just go with you to, like, go for a hike at a national park or something if you want. I know that you do that crap all the time. And so we're headed to Moab, Utah, which is uh, where Arches National Park and Canyonlands National Park is located. I'm pretty excited. I know Rich doesn't really care. He just wanted the road trip. <laughs> He's just like, whatever. I don't really care where we go. You just pick something. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, the start of spring break. 
this year, and uh, yeah, we're headed on our way. I don't want to have to turn on the the defroster. It'll probably kill our sound. <laughs> <laughs> my window is starting to fog over. Well, that doesn't bode well for our hike if it's so cold that uh, just us podcasting has misted all the windows. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little worried about that. Uh, the uh, weather forecast said that it would be 70 degrees and partly cloudy. And from what I can see... It is cloudy from one horizon to the other right now. And uh, when I went out to the car this morning, it was raining. As a matter of fact, when I went out to the car this morning, I found that my kids had left the door open on one of our cars all night long. So I don't know if the battery is dead on that car because the light was on the whole time, but I do know that it rained all over the door and the dashboard and the seat and the floor on that side of the car all night long. So that was uh, one of those fun little surprises I got this morning. But yeah, it was raining this morning when I went out to the car, so I'm kind of a little worried that uh, when we hike out to some of those arches that we might get uh, soaked. The fact that it's, you know, not going to be that hot is actually good because arches and canyon lands apparently are in like one of the driest, hottest parts of the entire freaking country. And like people die all the time in that place. So at least we won't have to deal with as much of that. Oh, see, I thought you were going to say at least we won't have to die alone. Because <laughs> <laughs> we went together. It's going to be a special group suicide. And speaking of alone, what is the topic for this episode? Uh, the topic for this episode, um, I guess I have a sort of an announcement. I don't know if it, if this counts as a, an announcement to most people because it's not really going to change much for them. But uh, I think for us it makes a big difference. My wife has gotten a job in a different state, which means that me and my family are going to be moving out of town. We are moving all the way to Houston, Texas. It's going to be a big change, I think. I don't know. I'm kind of, uh, I mean, I insisted to Rich Outfield that this will not end our podcast. We'll probably end our friendship, but not the podcast because, uh, I don't want things to end. I know that being far away would could make it difficult, but the good thing about podcasts is these days they don't have to be done with somebody that lives right nearby. I think that actually has been maybe one of the strengths of our podcast, unfortunately, over the years, is that we're able to just be in the same room and react to each other automatically. Because, you know, when you podcast over Skype, it's almost like, I don't know, talking over a walkie-talkie or something, you know, you talk and you talk and then you have to be like, over, let the other person talk, and because there's always a little bit of a, a lag that makes it so that you have a tendency to interrupt people by accident, and being, you know, sitting right across from each other, you can react even from things like facial expressions and stuff, although maybe we can manage to get the video to work on the Skype and maybe do the, uh, podcast that way usually putting video up tends to slow the internet down and it kills the audio but uh, who knows but yeah it's uh, it's going to be a lot of craziness for me over the next few months as I get ready I'm going to have to sell our house and I, I'm going to have to find a job because I don't have one she does um, but uh, I got to find myself a job Houston, Texas, and I am not a fan of doing that. <laughs> I don't know if that's one of your big uh, issues in life at all, Rish, but I hate, hate looking for jobs, hate job interviews, hate that crap so much. And basically, I worked at a job that often was not awesome, and I stayed there 
basically because it's better than trying to find a new job because I hate it so much. And uh, yeah, it's been like 13 years that I've been in the job that I'm at. Now I've got to go out there and try and get something else. So how will that change once you no longer work where you work? Will we continue to tiptoe around the name of the place or will the kid gloves just come off and you'll be able to bitch to your heart's content about <laughs> that job? I don't know that I would do that. There's, well, I guess there's the possibility somehow that it could come back and bite me in the ass. I don't know if that'll change that or not. Maybe a... Well, we all have heard stories of things like that coming back. Never podcasts, because nobody listens to podcasts, especially <laughs> ours. But people, you know, that post to Facebook and complain about their job or tweet. And I know that there are companies who employ people to track that stuff down, to police what people are saying about the company. And, you know, then there are just busybodies, bosses that are insist that you friend them on Facebook or bosses that can shadow you and see what you say. And Yeah, in media, like having a Facebook and a Twitter and a Snapchat and an Instagram, all that kind of stuff, that's just like standard. You have to have yourself straddling all the platforms that are out there and when it comes down to it tv news is not going to last forever you know people barely watch tv as it is luckily for me there's a shitload of baby boomers out there because they're the only ones left watching tv news really for the most part you know anybody younger than that is getting their news from the internet or from their facebook feed from youtube or whatever you know they don't have a tv you know a cable coming into their house, giving them that just, you know, the regular old, old-fashioned TV-style thing. So, eventually, TV news will be internet news, you know, you'll have, I assume, you know, you go out and get your, your news story, and that will just be uh, put up on your website instead. Places like, I don't know, uh, BuzzFeed, other Huffington Post other news, internet news I, I, I don't want to say like CNN.com because that's kind of uh, the opposite of what I'm talking about anyways, those kind of places that are news, but internet news and they do videos but it's uh, internet you know, only those kind of places uh, I guess are already kind of ahead of the curve oh, why do they do this? you ever notice the passing lane? If you get stuck behind a bunch of trucks and then the passing lane opens up, but it's right as you're trying to climb a big hill. So it's like, oh yeah, I can pass these trucks now. Oh crap, but I'm going 25 miles an hour because I've been behind these trucks. And I can't get up to speed to pass them because I'm on a steep hill now. Anyway. I yeah, your point was, was TV news is not going to last. Is what you said. Yeah, it's not going to last forever, so you kind of have to... Uh, get into all the other platforms. And so, yeah, I mean, way back when, when Facebook first was starting to take off, they asked, although more like told everybody to get a Facebook account and... Friend the station. Friend the station. Then they wanted us to share, you know, station stuff on Facebook. You know, here's our thing about our new report that's coming up tonight make sure to share that around you know they wanted us to basically you know they wanted us to be their advertising i wasn't into that i'll have to admit so i got a separate facebook account that was just for work and became friends with a lot of people at work on my work facebook account and uh, shared those things to those people at work who, of course, already knew about it anyways. So it's completely contrary to the point. But for the, for the time being, I covered my ass that way. And then eventually I just let that Facebook account sort of, you know, go fallow. 
so it's just been sitting there and mostly unused, unlooked at, unlogged into for years. The whole social media thing has, I mean, recently it's it's really become just, I, I remember when shows started putting hashtags uh-huh. during uh-huh. shows on their programming and how jarring that was to me because I still don't have a Twitter account. I'm not a Twitter guy. I was just like, why? Why are you guys doing this? And it's like, well, the reason is they want you to spread the news to your friends that you watched this and that you liked it and et cetera, et cetera. I, uh, recently, that Ghost in the Shell movie came out that was the remake of the anime, which is an adaptation of a manga. And, <laughs> and it didn't do well. It didn't do nearly as well as the studio, which lowballed the figure, predicted that it would do. And one of the pundits said, well, the reason it didn't do well is because there wasn't a big social media push. Scarlett Johansson is not a very social media active and I was just like, come on, that can't affect anything. And now, yeah, when movies come out, they're like, well, Emma Watson had X number of million Twitter followers. And the hashtag Beauty and the Beast remake had X number of reposts and all that. And that's why it opened so huge. And there was a, an interview with Scarlett Johansson. And she said, that yeah, that's the last thing I want to do is get on there and promote myself and tell people where I am and what I'm doing and what I'm eating it's like that I would prefer to have more privacy in my life thank you not less and suddenly for the first time I had respect for Scarlett Johansson I was like oh hey good for you honey too bad that Sony lost X million dollars on Ghost in the Shell or whoever made it I don't even remember at this point but good for you I think it depends on who you are, you know what I mean? Uh, Scarlett Johansson gets work without having to be somebody that, you know, is always promoting themselves. The people who are the biggest social media people are not doing well otherwise, usually. Like, what does Kim Kardashian do? She doesn't do anything. I mean, she's... I guess she has a reality show, I think, still. Does that still exist, you know? Probably. the Well, different iterations of the reality show. The Here's My Life on TV show that she has. But other than that, I mean, she doesn't, like, do things. I guess maybe she does businesses or something. Maybe she sells clothes as a clothes liner. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, she, I'm sure she's got all that stuff. I'm sure there's a fragrance... Yeah. I'm sure that they're, she you know, she's paid to a, endorse all sorts of products. And, she probably makes a crap load of money by being a big social media icon. But Scarlett Johansson is not that person. She's an actress. And so she gets acting jobs by being, you know, the actress. And she's not somebody that needs to bring her recognition with her. Emma Watson, I don't know. I, she's done Harry Potter's. I don't know what else she's done other than that and this Beauty and the Beast movie. Has there been anything else? Right, but she's been in nine 300 plus million dollar domestic grossing movies. And you don't have to do anything else. I mean, even <laughs> doing two, you wouldn't have to do anything else. Right. I don't know what, what the deal is with that. She wants to, I assume that, uh, you know, that, that's still her plan to be an actress. But, um... I'm I don't she, know. We... she has no reason to stop. Everything she's been in has made shit tons of money. I mean, Beauty and the Beast is gonna make Harry Potter, by the time it's done, look like... Like Percy Jackson. Yeah, seriously. Oh, man. <laughs> so, uh... You know, your job has not treated you well, in my opinion. Uh, sorry, in anyone's opinion. And uh, there was always the shadow of your job looming over our podcast and, and your writing endeavors and all that stuff. Not that I think any of what we are doing is wrong, but there's always, yeah, there are always people. There are always uh, 
busybodies, I guess, is probably the most pleasant way I can put it. I remember, and I've told this story before, but one of my writing teachers in school said, you know, I'm a writer and I've published some books and, you know, I, I do not seek out my books. Do not go out and read my books. I ask you not to read them. I ask you not to look for them. The last thing I need is for one of my students to read something and decide it's objectionable and try and get me fired. And it was interesting that he would just so bluntly say that in front of the class. But there are people that do stuff like that. There are people that seem to think, and you're married to one, that whatever you write must be indicative of who you are as a person. The you know, if you write about a serial killer, that you have those tendencies within you. You write, a, you know, some yeah, a character lights up a cigarette. And it's like, oh, now I know what he does during his commute, and it, it's just weird. <laughs> there that is way. people. I remember uh, I, I, one of your stories that we published on the show. Sorry, <laughs> I've got a stupid alarm on here that keeps me from going too fast. Um, and when I'm not paying attention to how fast I'm going, it beeps a lot. You hear plenty on Anklecast, I'm sure. But yeah, we did a we did one of your stories on the show, and you made a joke where one of the characters said something about Democrats, and immediately several people got on there and bitched about, "Oh, you think this? Then you wish Obama was impeached, and you." wish this and that and you're just like what the fuck yeah have, have the I asshole it? brought up Benghazi and stuff yeah. and I was just like look A if you've ever listened to our show you know that I am not that person I mean dear god and two just because it's in a story and a character makes a joke which it was a joke doesn't indicate what my personal politics are I, 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 plus the Democrats are the ones that are supposed to have a sense of humor. I mean, holy cow, dude. You you cast a dark, ugly, elephant-shaped shadow all over the party. Thank you. Yeah, it, it was interesting when that happened. Was one of the many people who just assumed because you wrote something in a book that that must be your opinion, not the opinion of a character or a joke a character would make, even. You know, it was just... It was a little surprising. I thought more of our audience. And uh, I felt sad when that happened. But, you know, there's going to be all different kinds in an audience, I assume. I mean, we make a point of not talking politics and not talking religion so that everyone can feel welcome in our audience. Because those are the things that most often divide people up. But they're like, okay, well, no, I'm in this group and you're in that group and we can't associate. You know, they, they start making their groups. And I, this is the end group and you're the out group and we're not going to be part with you. And you're, you know, no, nope, you can't. Okay, you're bad because you think that. And I'm good because I think this. And, you know, that immediately is how people divide each other apart, especially in this country. And um, it was frustrating. And it still managed to creep its way in. But it happens. Yeah, I, I make jokes all the time. And I would I, I just assume that people take it with a grain of salt because it, it's someone attempting to be funny. Um, but there are times when people call me on that, on a joke. And the people who post or email or uh, comment are in the vast minority, I would assume, to the people that just listen passively and right. they don't participate in any way. So, Actually, if, no, every person that listens to our show also posts. That Unfortunately, that's how few listeners we have. So uh, when someone is riled up enough to call me on a reference that I make or a joke or, uh, uh, you know, I dropped Donald Trump's name in, a, in an episode recently, then that there are probably a bunch of other people that feel the same way that heard that but didn't say anything. They just, you know, turned it off forever. They rage um, quit. Yeah, that's the word. <laughs> you know, I, the thing with writing is 
I do have a tendency to want to write care to to write characters that are just me, that are my point of view, my attitudes, my life experience, because that's what's easy. But every once in a while, you know, I'll try and distance myself from a character that I'm writing. In one story in particular, I had a character that just absolutely hated Star Wars and hated people that bring up Star Wars as though that, you know, was the end all be all of film. Knowing that anybody that read it would say, oh, well, yeah, the views in this story do not uh, <laughs> represent the opinions of Rish Outfield or Rish Outfield Genital Cream Products Incorporated and are solely, yeah, that, so there's that sort of stuff. But yeah, going back to your job, I mean, the interesting things happen to you at that job. You, it, things happen that don't happen in other jobs because it's the media and because it's right. live uh-huh. and all that stuff. But still, we tend not to, to talk about it on the show just for fear of somebody taking it out of context or taking it in context and wanting to be punitive about it. Yeah. If I ever do tell stories, I do make sure to at the very least leave all names out and say, this guy I know did this and this guy is like this and I think that's probably just wise in general I try to avoid using names I don't even use my family's names I mean you never know what kind of a wacko you might uh, get deciding to be your biggest fan I'm your biggest fan but now I'm outside your window well part of me says that we should concentrate on actually getting fans yeah. Rather than being afraid of one of them coming to visit us, but yeah, that's probably a good. Idea. <laughs> but you're you're right. I mean, you have children and you have responsibilities and stuff. And yeah, you never know. Somebody, it, you know, J.D. Salinger or something like that had to live his whole life apologizing or you know shunning the limelight because people read his work and took it to the far extreme or crazy people read his work and were affected by it and somehow the blame fell upon him or somehow, you know, the... I, and so being an artist, you want to touch people, but you don't have do the... You want to touch people. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have the the luxury of deciding which people you yeah. touch. That is definitely true. But all that's going to change once you go to Houston. Yeah! Because you're going to be surrounded by new people and new shitty job environments, and we will be not talking about those. We'll be talking about the old (laughs) ones. Oh, yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see uh, what happens. It'll be interesting to see what kind of a job I wind up in. I mean, I have 17 years of experience as, uh, you know, working in news... But is that what I will wind up in next? I, I've checked all the stations in Houston, and uh, right now none of them have an opening that would work for me. My wife seems to think that I can do anything in the newsroom, and I, you know, if with the, uh, the proper training and stuff like that, I probably could. And it wouldn't take a lot of training, I don't think, even. But I have not done them. And, you know, Houston's a big city. It's, I believe, the number nine media market in the in the country. Mm-hmm. And uh, generally, if you're going to a top ten media market, you don't go there, you know, expecting to be trained to do your job. You go there already as someone who is kick-ass at what they do. And, you know, you're going to go in there and do it. You're going to take it to the to the big city now you know you spent your time in Des Moines and Hartford and Bakersfield and now you're ready my guess is Des Moines is a metropolis compared to where I come from but well where you come from yeah I mean anything is a metropolis. Heck, the town I live in is a metropolis <laughs> compared right. to where you come from. I guess I wasn't, <laughs> my re- town... wasn't referring to the two-acre estate that I grew up on. <laughs> my but... town didn't exist 20 years ago. Uh, anyhow, 
do do they require you to be bilingual in Houston? I don't think they require. I am bilingual, just not in a useful lingua. Right, but I'm just saying. Um. <laughs> do if you wanted a job at you know, ABC or CBS uh, conglomerate, whatever you call it, uh, affiliate in Houston, would they want you to also speak Spanish? Um, it wouldn't be a requirement. Uh, it would be a huge plus, I'm sure, if you were. Especially, you know, a reporter or someone like that. They're going to have to deal with a lot of folks that speak Spanish. Um, and so being able to do that would make it easier for you to uh, do your job. But yeah, uh, you know, so far, the ABC, CBS, and all of those stations broadcast in English. And... Uh, you know, if you wanted to get on with the, I mean, I didn't, I haven't looked to see if there are jobs open at the Univision station or, you know, there probably are. I mean, I could probably, if only, uh, maybe they'd be like, maybe they'd let me speak Portuguese to them and they'd try and speak. <laughs> You've done that, that a few works. times, yeah. haven't you? I, <laughs> I can't carry on conversations with Portuguese speaking people, uh, but you're selling yourself short. You know how to say, Que estás muriendo. Yeah, that's You are right. dying. You know how to say that. That's right. I can, you know, if they were to speak really slow, I would be able to communicate. But, uh, you know, I, I've found that they don't do that. Uh, Mexicans and... Uh, at least Mexicans and, like, Central Americans, uh, they tend to speak really fast when they speak Spanish and I just can't follow it. It's just too, too much. I can get a word or two here, here and there, but if I hear an American speaking in Spanish, I can totally tell what they're saying because they go so much slower. So, you know, who, who knows? But I don't believe that, uh, yeah, the, uh, bilingual thing will be an issue. I worked in California, and they didn't require it there, so... Okay, so I guess now we need to talk about what happens to the show. <laughs> yeah, uh, my plan is that we continue every week on Monday nights to do our same thing. Unfortunately, we won't be able to get together and do uh, my favorite new thing that we've been doing, which is go to the... Uh, Wendy's and sit and write for an hour. We could still try and find some way to do that if you wanted to, like get on Skype and then be like, okay, you have to write, don't you try and do anything else. And like, we can yell at each other over Skype if we see that, you know, you're not writing, but uh, I don't know. Maybe we will see if we can implement that. But uh, my plan is, yeah, that we still get together and on Monday nights we podcast. We've done podcasts over Skype before on occasions when we're unable to just get together like normal. Um, you know, we'll just get together and do one over Skype. And most people probably wouldn't know the difference because we always, you know, record our, uh, our own separate recording and merge them. So it doesn't sound like it was recorded on Skype. It's not, uh, you know, super shitty sounding like this <laughs> like Skype ones tend to be I mean you've been doing a podcast with Marshall Latham over Skype for a long time and I've been a part of those several times so it can be done and uh, you know it, I I don't want to let it lapse I think uh, keeping it going will be beneficial in many ways when we used to work together you moved up back up here from, from L.A., and uh, we worked together, and we saw each other almost every day. I think we worked together only actually three days a week, because I was Monday through Friday, and you were like Wednesday through Sunday or something like that. So <laughs> we worked together three days a week, and we would hang out together after work, and we carpooled to work, and so we drove together to work and home from work, and we were out looking for toys all the time. So we would stop at like three Walmarts on the way 
home from work and three Walmarts on the way to work. So we spent a lot of time together, but then you quit and left that job. And I knew that most likely knowing myself anyways, if we didn't have something set up where, you know, every week on this day, it's a standing engagement that we will get together that day and do something. You know, I would see you once a month or less, once every six months, and you know, our friendship would just fade away. So I was desperate to make sure that didn't happen because I have few enough friends as it is. Uh, so, you know, I think the same thing needs to be done this time because it's possible we may be back here again someday. Uh, my wife really likes it here and wants to come back. She works for a large company that has uh, branches branches all over the world. Most places, though, there's like one per city. So if you uh, want to move up, you tend to have to move around. She says that in the future there will probably be another place put out here that she may be able to to come back to. So it's possible that we may be back. I do have family here and, you know, it would be nice. My dad lives, like, right... I, I live closer to my dad than any of my other brothers and sisters. And so it's it kind of really sucks to move away because, you know, when I was a kid, my grandpa lived two states away. And I never saw him. I saw him like once a year. And so I had no relationship really with my grandpa. And I think it's really cool that my kids can have that relationship with their grandpa. And they don't have to just be like, oh yeah, I saw my grandpa last year. Because unfortunately on my wife's side, her parents are still in Canada. And so they don't get to have that great of a relationship with those grandparents. And so at least they had one, but now we're moving away from both of them. And both of them are going to be way too far to drive to even. And we at least drove to my grandpa who lived two states away. <laughs> but it's a 20 hour drive from Houston to here. Really? Yes. Texas is a big mother effing state, man. It's gigantic. Like, I think the majority of getting to Houston is driving all the way across Texas. Everything's bigger in Texas, as they say. So yeah, you know, it'd be cool to come back someday. But uh, yeah, it'll be a few years, unfortunately. And in those few years, I don't want to see the show or our friendship diminish and just kind of go away. You know, I had a lot of friends in high school and none of them live close to me now and I'm basically not friends with them anymore. It would be really weird and kind of awkward to call them up and talk to them. I actually have a friend who lived in Houston for a couple of years and I thought, oh, I should call that guy up and talk to him about Houston but I haven't talked to him in like 13 years and it would be really awkward so I don't call him up to talk to him about it because I would just feel odd. Be like, hey, remember me? And he's the kind of guy too who would be like, yeah, I remember you. You're the guy that never calls me. He's the kind of guy who would not, not take any of the responsibility on himself and say, yeah, I never call you either. Instead, it would be all my fault. So... Yeah, I don't think I'll call that guy, but I don't want that to happen to us. So, you know, I, I figured do our best to continue to do the podcast. When it comes down to it, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a lot more podcasting done, you know? Because we don't have the opportunity to waste all the uh, time that we, uh, that we do these days. And when we go and see movies together... And often not ones that we talk about on the show, you know, we'll just go. We went and saw Split together just a couple weeks ago, just because we felt like it. And that's what we did on Monday night. You know, once we're not around each other, we won't be able to do that. We'll just 
We'll have to do that on our own time. But anyways, that's what I'm thinking. I don't know what you think about that. We haven't talked too in depth about it. Well, I, I can't predict what's going to happen. I, I, yeah, if, if we're forced to communicate via Skype, my guess is we'll do much more podcasting because, yeah, we're not just hanging out in a parking lot. We're not eating together. And so, yeah, there may be far more episodes in the future, but I don't know when people move away the attempt to try and find things to replace them. You know, you're, you're going to find new friends at the meat packing plant where you get a job. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's so so many times you just move away and then, yeah, it's too hard to stay in touch or whatever. You don't, you're not going to run into that guy and be reminded like it was in the past. I, yeah, it's difficult. I have a, uh, a friend who used to live out here and uh, a couple of years ago when we moved from our old house to our new house he decided to move back to sacramento just out of the blue too it was really weird because they hadn't said anything about it and then like one day like yeah we're moving to sacramento and like two weeks later they were gone and he's come back and visited a time or two and uh he gives me a hard time when I mean, he stays on my back and he texts me a lot and calls me a lot and you know tries to make sure that we stay friends which is cool because I'm crappy at that I'm not the kind of person that does a good job and he gives me a hard time too you know he's like oh yeah you know he'll text me a question and I don't answer for like two days he's just like oh you suck and I'm finally like, oh, yeah, I do, sorry. Uh, so here's the answer. <laughs> My problem is that I'll see a text at a time that I can't respond to it. So I'll see it and I'll be like, oh, okay, I need to, when I get a minute, I need to, you know, text him back. But then it's not on my phone saying you have, you know, five texts or whatever that you haven't looked at. And so... You know, when it's not there to remind me, I forget that I needed to do that, and I just don't. That's why I don't get back to him. I probably should just not ever click into the text thing and get rid of the little number that tells me I need to, to reply. Because uh, then I'll actually do so. You know, maybe that's a lesson that I need to learn. It's going to be tough, and I don't know uh, if we'll come back. I've been on my wife's case to, uh, you know, like I said, her company has branches all over the world. And, uh, you know, I've been trying to get on it. She's like, dude, you know, there's an opening in London. Try to get it. It would be freaking awesome. The sad thing is she has no interest. She's like, London, oh. England is always like overcast and gloomy. Oh, I don't, I, you know, and I'm like, dude, but it's London. I keep trying to, at the very least, I'm like, you know, you got, you, we could go to Australia. We could go to, you know, some of these places, New Zealand, places where they at least speak the same language. So it wouldn't be a big barrier for you. So you could step in and actually, you know, do your job. Uh, you wouldn't have to like learn Dutch or something to, to be able to, uh, to function. But so far, she's not interested. I think she doesn't want to be too far away from everybody or, or something like that. I don't know. I'd like to have those kind of adventures. I'm kind of excited about going to Houston because it's different than anything I've ever experienced. I've, you know, I've never lived in the South. Shoot, I don't know. I've, I've never even traveled to Texas except for one stop, you know, layover in the Fort Worth Dallas Fort Worth Airport, so I have no familiarity with it at all. So I'm kind of excited just to, you know, the adventure of it, seeing new things and checking it out. So, you know, I'll hope it, I hope it's at least going to be interesting. It'll be neat. I hope it's not going to be just an unmitigated disaster. I never get a job and our family falls apart and 
his outside. But uh, I have no idea what the future has in store for me, really. So we shall see. 109 miles to our destination, sir. Wow. But That's we're, a lot of podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> but we are running out of space on your recorder, so we're going to have to wrap this up here. Because I think we have, what, like 10 minutes left that we can uh, talk before we got to switch out to my uh, recorder? Yeah. I meant to free up some space, but things happen. And yeah. You know what I'm talking about. I Whoever sure you do. are, you, things always happen. There's always less time than you thought there would be. I guess that goes hand in hand with uh, what we're talking about. But yeah, this the topic of this episode is the show must go on. So we will see how much more we podcast. And, you know, in the back of my mind, I've been wanting to do another contest, you know, short story contest on the show and, and all that. And maybe if we're super motivated, once there's thousands of miles between us, that stuff will pick up and that will become the priority because right now, you know, it's like writing and eating and just hanging out is the priorities. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what we can do with things now that we have different things that we'll be doing with our time. Uh, writing will remain a priority, that's for sure, but not as we get together, probably. But, uh, yeah, that's something that I do not want to let uh, fall by the wayside ever again. Never want to see my progress go away. And... Yeah, things uh, have been going pretty good, and I, I feel almost like a different person than I was two months ago. So I don't see a change causing the progress to go away. So that's good. All right. Well, thank you for joining us, you three listeners, your three loyal listeners. And uh, we will be back again yeah. soon, I believe. Be back in just a minute. Trade out these recorders and be right back. Of course, you won't hear it for two weeks, but, anyways. See you then, folks. Good night. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 attribution, no derivatives, share alike license. That means you can't sell it, but you can share it with everybody. It also means you have too much time on your hands.